it isn't just saying words. I mean, you can say words, oh, I'm immortal, I'm immortal, I'm immortal, and you don't really believe them. So if you're going to make a confession, it has to be a confession of what you absolutely know, 100% is true. And then you are in agreement with what you believe, and your confession is just an, a, uh, a frequency that carries life on it. You know, but a lot of people, they try and confess so that they will believe, you know, well, if I confess it enough, then I'll, I'll believe it. That doesn't work. You confess what you believe, not confess what you're trying to believe. So for some saying I'm immortal, I'm immortal, I'm immortal. Is not necessarily going to make any difference if they don't really believe and their whole state of being is that they are immortal then essentially if you brood and incubate the reality of that immortality then you then become an oracle a voice that speaks with that authority you have that energy within your voice you activate it in that it is the truth that you are living in and then what comes out of your mouth is what's in your heart the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart, it says in Matthew. Therefore, you can't just speak it like a parrot. You've got to speak it from the heart, something that is already in your heart that you believe that is the truth. Then immortality in the confession is just an overflow of what you already believe in your heart. You're not making it true because you say it. You're saying it because it is true. And you're affirming the truth. You're affirming the reality that you are immortal and you're designed not to die. Um, now, all we're doing is actually stating what Jesus said in John 6. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you won't die. You know, so we're not actually saying anything other than Jesus said. But of course, people will take what Jesus said, twist it to mean an only spiritual death. Therefore, they will only take it to be, well, yeah, one day when I die, I'll go to heaven. But it doesn't say that. Jesus said, if you eat my flesh, drink my blood, you won't die. And he then equated that to those that ate the manna in the wilderness, the fa their fathers, spiritual fathers from the past, ate and died. So he said, this is not the manna like they ate. This is the manna that's come down out of heaven, the bread that's come down out of heaven. You eat this, you're not going to die. So it very clearly is talking about physical death. Now, part of the problem is people don't have 2,000 years of testimony of people who haven't died and haven't died and haven't died. Because we went through a period where the truth of what Jesus said was spiritualized and not presented as physical death and therefore i guess from the early church fathers who may well have had a different perspective to that and of course some people believe that john the apostle john didn't die because he knew the power of the love of god and didn't die now i'm not quoting that no I've, i have talked to john but, you know, at the end of the day, I've talked to a cloud of witnesses, I've talked to angels, I've talked to all sorts of um, people. So maybe that is the truth that he didn't die. I know they tried to kill him and couldn't kill him. They tried to boil him in oil and kill him. They could kill him. You know, so perhaps that is the truth because he knew the power of the love of God in his life. You know, he recorded those things. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you know, he recorded some of those things. He knew the truth of them. Obviously. It does have to be outworked, you know, you know, that that is the truth. You can't just hope for the best. It has to be something you base the reality of your life upon. And there is no double mindedness or doubt or unbelief at all in that reality. And there may be people through history who haven't died who may still be alive. You know, they talk about the Desert Fathers and, you know, I know Ian Clayton and others talk about having met people who are hundreds of years old. I know the the guy in the cave in India 
you know, Saru Sundar Singh said he met the Maharishi of whatever, some place in India, up in Nepal or something, and he was been there for hundreds of years and hadn't died. So it may be examples of it, but for most Christians, they have a covenant with death. Their covenant agreement with death is, I'll go to heaven when I die. But in, in reality, I think you have to change your acceptance of death and you have to have your mindset renewed and changed towards the inevitability of death. And then you have to understand if you want to say, well, where does the Bible talk about this? You've got to take the context of some of the things it said and not take the evangelical interpretation of something like Hebrews 9, 27, you know, it's appointed man wants to die and then the judgment. Well, in reality, they will have taken that is you have definitely got to die and then you're going to be judged. Whereas actually what that's talking about is the judgment that's already been passed because we already died. When Jesus died, we died. So we were appointed to die with him. And we did. All died in Adam and all were made alive in Christ. We were we were buried with him. We, we died with him. We were buried with him and we are resurrected with him. So we now live in resurrection life. But as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So right throughout history, no one has taught this. No one has explained what Jesus meant. And therefore, people have taught other people, priests and leaders all the way through church history, have taught people it's inevitable that you're going to die. Having taken, you know, Hebrews 9, 27, out of context, not talking to about what Jesus did and that what he did is never going to repeat because he's done it. It is finished. The work's finished. That is the context to Hebrews 9, 27. And then actually realizing, yes, we have died, but now we live an immortal life. If we believe it and live in that mindset, but it hasn't been the mindset for the last 2000 years for most people. So they expect to die. They have a thing or that, well, that will be the end of all my suffering in this life and all that stuff, you know, because they've not lived in an overcoming way in this life. So I do think there is a, uh, a complete mindset shift that needs to take place if we're going to accept the reality of immortality. And you're never going to be immortal unless you live in health. Because all death has to be eradicated from not just our mind, but our body and our DNA and the cells of our body. So we can't have an agreement with death within our body which means we have to change our whole perspective on health and wholeness. And if you live in health, you won't get sick. And if you won't get sick, you don't need to die. So it starts with healing. I can receive healing for anything in me that is not healthy. And then I can live in health no longer needing healing because you only need healing if you're not if you're sick live in health and if i continue to live in health i'm not going to die so there's a process of believing that god wants you to be healed and restored and whole then living in that reality of health is my inheritance and therefore i don't need to get sick and then if i don't get sick and i'm in health i'm not going to die so then yeah, 2 Timothy, I think 1, um, 9, 10, talks about life and immortality being brought to light through the gospel. So it's like this has already been brought to light, but people have lived in darkness, not light. And people have been taught that they're going to die. Therefore, there's no expectation for immortality in most people. There are a lot of people in the world who quite like there to be immortality we recently saw a, a thing of arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> basically talking about immortality and he didn't want to die and all this stuff and actually he probably got he's probably got more faith for living forever than a lot of christians do who have been taught well heaven is your promotion when you die 
So if you're going to be promoted to a higher level, you've got to die. So they've already bought into that and have particularly, I think, a wrong connection to time in that the passage of time brings aging and death for them. Well, for me, the passage of time is not passing. I have all the time that I need, including all the time to live the full life that I need to live and then be translated somewhere else, if that's the case, without having to die. Because I accept that I may well come to the end of everything I need to do here, perhaps. Maybe that's 50 years, 100 years, who knows? And then maybe I'll be like Enoch or Elijah and be translated into that realm to be able to continue doing things there. Or maybe I won't. And maybe we'll just enter into the ages to come having continued that life. There's sort of a lot of who knows what the future will hold in that we're not given specifics of what the future holds. We're just talked about this age and the age that comes. So we've got the age that's passed, the old covenant age. We've got the new covenant age that we're living in. And we may have ages to come, which may have different ways of living engaging uh, and i'm not privy to what that might be so it doesn't really bother me one way or another um but it may mean that we will get resurrection bodies uh in that we may have bodies which have transfigured to be able to be capable of functioning in different realms in different ways because Jesus was different after his resurrection than he was before his resurrection. What will we be if we fully embrace the immortality of a resurrection body? Because it talks about having the power of the res resurrection war working in our mortal bodies. Well, what's it working at? Bringing these mortal bodies into immortality. And it talks about having put on immortality. And I think that's probably what they're talking about in activating it. We need to put it on. So we need to engage it and live in the reality of it. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.